said some of these days I do it so good you're gonna miss me honey and I'm talking about days when you feel all blue you're gonna miss my hugging you're gonna miss my Kissing. Welcome back. I'm Michael Ray. You're listening to Thought Provoking Talk on Dresser After Dark. Michael McDonald with us. Michael McDonald is the co author of The Silver Bomb and Beyond. He's a precious metals analyst. He's an author. He's the owner of Wholesale Gold Group and a national precious, precious metal dealer. And uh, let's say, Michael, hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, Michael, today and today, especially in today's world and today's culture and this confusion and this money market that's going on today, how important is it that we really take a look at gold and silver, the precious metals? I think it's uh, at the top of the list. Um, you know, I'm a bit biased because I've been sure. in the market for 10 years or so. Uh, I've written books on it. So um, I'm in my own little, uh, you know, bias bubble. But uh, with that being said, uh, nothing out there has performed better than silver uh, over the last decade. So you're looking at the Dow Industrial Average, it's flat over the last 10 years. Sure. Um, silver is up over 700%, and we haven't seen anything yet. Uh, gold's up over 500%. So there's numerous reasons for that, but uh, the basic reason is, is the dollar is uh, in a death spiral. Um, you know, it's it's lost 95 percent of its purchasing purchasing power since sure. the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913. So, well, but, but let me ask you this: what 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 is it about the loss of confidence with the dollar today? Is it because of all the money, let's say here in the United States, the all the money that we owe to China? You know, the money we're dumping into other con countries, the dollars that are just getting printed with nothing behind them. I mean, all, the, all of these things have to be variables that we'd have to take into consideration when we looked at the gold and the silver market. Yeah, you, you, I mean, you've, you've you know, hit the, the nail on the head. I mean, it's, it's the mass money printing that we're doing with just the push of a button. You know, uh, the money that's being created isn't physical paper dollars, it's you know, adding zeros on the end of uh, long strings of numbers. Sure. So our, our dollar is backed by nothing other than debt in our military might, uh, which is super stretched across the, gro the globe. Uh, oh, no question you know, about it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, you know, what we're trying to do right now is cure an alcoholic with whiskey. Uh, it's not going to work. You can't solve a debt crisis with more debt. And that's what the, you know, the super low interest rates that the Federal Reserve is trying to get people to get into more debt to, to spark the economy. Well, it's not working. You know, look at, look at Europe. Uh, they just spent close to a trillion dollars uh, in these uh, LTROs, uh, basically lending money for free to buy sovereign debt bonds. So, and it's not working. So those, those uh, purchases are, are negative now. So uh, they're going to have to do the same thing next week and the next month. It's, it's a never-ending cycle. The QE never left. QE2 uh, has morphed into QE3, which is uh, world. It's, it's the quantitative easing of the world. And um, everybody's talking about, well, when's QE3 coming? Well, it's been happening. <laughs> it's, uh, it's gone global, though. It's just not United States. I think a prime example of what you're talking about, <clears throat> let's touch on, and I'll, we'll make it simple, but let's touch on the, the decline of the housing market. <clears throat> there, were, there were people who bought homes. They went to a bank, and the bank gave them loans. Then the bank, in turn, packaged the loans up and sold them to someone else who packaged those packages up and sold them to someone else. And by the time they were done, that uh, perceived the value of the packages you know, included in the packages were, you know, billions of dollars. But it, in truth, they were only worth a few million in their actual, uh, the, the actual dollar value. So they inflated it so much, there was no value there, and, and the market gave way. And I think that's the same thing that's happening now. Well, exactly. And also, you know, the, the mortgages have been sliced and diced and sold off into multiple arenas and sure. hedge funds and derivatives. So, 
to get the title on the house that you owe money on may be next to impossible. So I mean, I even got an email from a client saying, you know, is it worth paying my mortgage if I can't ever get the title to the house? Yeah. So it made me think, wow, well, you <laughs> certainly got a point. If, if you're going to be paying for 30 years on a property and never received the title because it's sliced and diced 30 ways to Sunday, you, get, you got a point. But, you know, not only are we in a debt bubble, but we're in a global corruption bubble. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody can uh, deny that. You know, everywhere you look, there is greed and corruption abound. And that is why it is imperative for people to get physical gold, and I like silver even more, but both. Uh, you know, gold is a, a place to store value. Uh, where silver is where you're going to really see some enormous gains over the next you know, coming months. Sure, plus, plus, Michael, you've got it in your hands. It's tangible. It's not something that's going to disappear on you. And I, <clears throat> I really right, it's not, a, it's not a, a digital account which can be erased, which we've seen enormous. I mean, even the CIA's website has been hacked into. I mean, we've had sure. missile silos down for 15 minutes without ex- explanation. So... You know, things are happening in the, in the global, you know, um, Internet world with, with this hacking, whether it's done by the governments or, or rogue entities. We don't know. But, you know, things are at risk. So it's the time to really kind of button down the hatches, get prepared, um, you know, have some metal on hand. Um, you know, it's, there's no counterparty risk. It's, you got it in your hand. You know what you've got. It's, it's redeemable in any country, in any language for what it is. Yeah, most importantly, it's tradable. I mean, I think that's really the key word. You know, the, uh, you, you can walk into another country right now with dollar bills, and the way that it's falling, it doesn't mean a whole lot. And if we're not very careful, and if we don't do something here very quickly, because obviously the administration is doing nothing, and I don't want to get political about it, but if, if we don't do something about it, we're, we're going to go right down into the depths of nowhere. And if you go back to 1940, 1941, <clears throat> the, uh, Germany right before the, the Second World War, they were in the same exact place. We were total uh, a, a total confusion as far as the economy went, a very unsure, unstable economy. People didn't know who they were anymore. And it almost sounds like who we are now, and it's frightening that somebody with enough <clears throat> strength in their voice is going to cause us to move in a direction that will be totally devastating. And I think we are run by, <clears throat> and I probably repeat this 10 times a day, we're fear-driven right now. And at least if you've got a little gold and silver behind you, you know if it really comes down, you've got something tradable. Exactly. You know, and, and, and what you just touched upon, we outline in the book. We basically let the reader know how we got into this predicament and how to get out of it. You know, we... You know, we're talking about fearful, scary things. But let me highlight, we have a, a real opportunity here. I mean, think about it. If, if you would have had a conversation with me eight years ago and you bought some silver, you'd be up roughly 700% in that investment. So we haven't seen the end of this by a long shot. Uh, we have tremendous gains moving forward. And the opportunity right now for somebody to actually gain in this environment is enormous. So, you know, I, I highly recommend that you investigate the silver opportunity. Our bomb, the silverbomb.com. You can you can read about it and discover whether or not you want to to move forward on that. But um, whether it's through through us or our source uh, or my company, Wholesale Gold Group, um, I urge the listeners to just do some homework and research. Um, you know, Google, Yahoo, YouTube are great places to start. Now, by the way, you've got uh, here that uh, currently we're listing silver, what, $35 an ounce? And then uh, very quickly, it, it could go up as high as $500 an ounce or more. And I can see that happening only because of the confusion with the currency, the confusion of the direction the company, the, the country's taking, and what's going on with the economy and the spending. And if I have to go over everything in the list, we could be here for the next 12 hours. So I think that in and of itself is a problem. And what I'm hearing you say, the message is that they're not doing it for you. You do it for yourself. And this is the way to shore up what you have if it all comes down. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, and to touch upon silver, once again, 
you know, first of all, it's proven and undeniable that the price of silver is manipulated heavily to the downside by the big banks. Okay, but not, not only that, but it's used in over 10,000 industrial applications with no replacement. Silver has no replacement. It's the best conductor of electricity. And we throw away most of what we use. Uh, and, peak, you know, peak silver is, is a real deal. Easy silver to find is hard. Mining production has dwindled over the last nine years. So we're, we're looking at a situation where here is this valuable needed silver in the phone we're speaking into right now to every computer, uh, solar panels, batteries, mirrors, clothing. It's in everything. Uh, and we're running out of it. We throw it away. It's too expensive. Uh, it, it, it would cost roughly $1,000 an ounce to, to adequately uh, recycle the silver that we use. So silver has got an enormous upside potential, and um, there's not a lot of it out there. By the time the masses wake up to this opportunity, there won't be any silver to invest in. Okay, so in essence, it's not like, well, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I take that back. It's kind of like oil. Oil is not something that's going to be around forever. You, there's going to come a time we're going to use it all up. So am I, am I wrong in, in hearing you say that if we're not careful, silver is going to be used up also. There's only a certain well, amount of it that's here. Yeah, I mean, it's a, that's a great you know, analogy. However, you know, there are two sides of the oil debate, you know, peak oil or not peak oil. Yeah. You know, is it, is it constantly being created and there's an unlimited source of oil? Or is there peak, you know, so there's, there is some debate. And however, with silver, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, the easy silver has pretty much been found. I mean, yeah, you're, we're going to still find silver, but, you know, it's much deeper, much harder, uh, much more costly to extract. So it's more of a cut and dry issue on the silver side where, where the oil, you know, there's two sides kind of debating out what it is and what it isn't. So um, but silver is just... Um, cut and dry, you know, do some research. One, you know, the silver bomb is, is a great place to, uh, to learn about the silver opportunity and, and how financially we got here into this place uh, is a global financial, uh, you know, crisis. Yeah. And then how to hedge against the oncoming uh, problems with the currencies. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you, you, uh, you stated it very well. Now, by the way, individual hedge is what you're talking about. Could the government do something about this? Could they come in if somebody had the wherewithal and the brightness to do this, uh, deal with this and increase what we have and shore up, you know, our backup with gold and silver? Because originally it was supposed to be we have X amount of gold and silver and that's what you produce the dollars with. It was easier to carry around. Now we have more dollars than gold and silver. So what do you do? Well, uh, the the dollars, the paper currencies out there, if you, and we, again, you know, I keep plugging this, but it's a great resource. You know, we talk about in the book the, the history of currencies. Uh, and the average lifespan of a fiat currency, fiat currency means a currency that's backed by nothing. It's like monopoly money, and this, that's what the world currently has is a bunch of monopoly money that we have this faith in. Because we're told that, you know, it's just, it's tradition and heritage that we believe in this paper money. So it's backed by nothing. It's not backed by gold or silver or oil or, you know, on and on. Um, so the history of these fake monopoly money currencies called fiat currency, the average lifespan is 37 years. Well, we're going on about 40 years now with the U.S. dollar uh, after the uh, 1970s coming off of the gold standard. So we're going to be seeing a demise in my opinion, not only in my opinion, but if you, you know, a lot of big names out there that I respect and value, um, Jim Seclair, James Turk, on and on, they, you know, preach, you know, the, the end of paper currencies are, are coming at some point. Is it this year, next year, five years from now? Who knows? But, you know, things seem to be heating up right now, especially in Europe. We're having a major, and the IMF came out, was it today or yesterday? It was either, either yesterday or today. They came out and publicly stated that the euro uh, is on the verge of collapse, which three months ago everybody was saying, oh, it would never happen. So <laughs> they're changing their tune now. So this is a big statement from the IMF, um, you know, talking about the euro. So sure. um, that is actually now being openly talked about by the 
the heads of the IMF. So um, we are seeing a currency 